What's up everyone, Danny Lightning back with another War Robots video. Today we're going to set up a hangar that's pretty much as free to play as you can get. All the weapons, robots, everything can be either bought with resources or built in the workshop. Nothing has to be pulled out of crates. When I started playing this game, I would say every day I probably played between two and four games for the first couple of years. And it took me probably two or three years to slowly build together a really nice hangar, but eventually I got there. If you don't have any of these weapons yet, throw Punisher and Punisher T's on everything. You can just go out and buy them with silver. They're cheap to upgrade and they're really good. I did put out a video not too long ago where I played a hanger with nothing but Punisher and Punisher T's. I'll make sure that video pops up on the screen at the end of this video in case you want to check it out. This will be a long video, so I'm going to make sure I have chapters for the different parts of the video so you guys can skip around to the parts that you want to see. The first robot we have is the Kepri with a whiteout drone, magnetars, nuke amp, two heavy armor kits, and an advanced repair. And this thing does great. Next, we have the Phantom with a whiteout, two cudgels, and a mace, two heavy armor kits, and a nuke amp. Next, we have a Fenrir with a Persephone drone and three heavy armor kits and advanced repair. We got Redeemers and Tehrans. Love those old weapons. Next, we have the Skyros. We're actually going to run this one without any modules, just to be crazy. We do have an advanced repair and no modules. Weapons, we got the Havocs, and we have one of those old school Nebula drones. So, yeah, you can build all this stuff in the workshop or buy it with your resources. Next, we have a Demeter with a Nebula drone, two heavy armor kits, a nuke amp, and advanced repair and pulsar weapons. Today we're going to play a Nodens with Cyclones, three anti-controls, and a cannibal reactor. Now they did give everybody a Titan pilot for free. I'm assuming they're still doing that once you get to a certain level. So I think you're going to get one Titan pilot. So we did throw a Titan pilot on there, but we just did a couple of skills. And that's what we got. Cautious pilot, armor expert, roadhog, and stubborn warrior. So when it comes to the mothership, that's kind of like an afterthought. Motherships really aren't all that important. They're nice. They're helpful. But it is really, really hard to get motherships. I've got some that I've had for probably a year and still haven't been able to max out yet. So when it comes to motherships, just use whatever you have. If you have a mothership that'll heal you up and you can throw a couple of gravity amplifiers on it, that is awesome. Laser blast cannons, de decent. I am a big fan of the durability extenders. And either one of those repair deals is fine. The periodic or the repair blast station, either one of those works fine. Some people actually like the periodic better because you're probably going to get more healing overall with that actually it's it's kind of a crazy deal but a lot of people like the cheaper one better but yeah when it comes to these motherships just use whatever you have laying around because you can't be too picky and choosy it's probably going to take you a really long time to get a good mothership so throw whatever you got on there so that is a really amazing well-balanced hanger this will work great for team deathmatch this will work great for beacon games it may not be the best free-for-all hanger and just to show you guys that this is actually really nice and not crap i'm going to play five games and i'm going to show you all five win or lose no matter how good or how bad they are we are going to keep this as realistic as possible I'm going to play five games in a row, record all five, and that's what you're going to get. If the games are good, you're going to see that they're good. If they're bad, you're going to see that they're bad. And after the gameplay, I'll also recommend some other Titans and robots that you can build in the workshop that are also really good. These aren't the only good ones, but yeah, let's go play some games, guys. All right, so we are going to drop in. This is going to be our first game. Remember, we're going to show you some different stuff, right? We're going to show you some other robots, some other Titans, and all kinds of stuff that's really good after we do the gameplay but we are going to start off with our phantom this is probably my favorite little beacon runner right now so this thing is extremely good for a beacon runner because it's very fast it's currently very durable that's why you want to have a phantom in your workshop your first robot should probably be a fast beacon runner the first thing that you drop when you're playing beacon games but we're actually going to play three of these uh we're going to th play three Speaking games and we're gonna play two team death matches so we're gonna get a little bit of both types of games in here guys and gals so right now we're trying to fight these guys so they can't get to our beacon I did get to it first and I'm kind of surrounded so I gotta really watch with my healing module and make sure I'm using my ability when this little robot goes into the ability he gets a bunch of defense points and becomes very strong so you want to make sure you're using that at the right times plus he's able to teleport so if you hit the ability 
you run somewhere, you hit it again, you can teleport back to where you came from and get out of there when you're in a bad situation. So you can either use this to teleport or become more durable. So if you're just standing there and you need the durability, you can just hit that thing. And that is a big help. So right now our team seems to be doing really well. And I think what I'm going to do is just run down here. So if I get in trouble, I can just hit that, abut that button again and teleport right back to where I came from and get out of, my, out of that bad situation. All right, we got that guy. So I'm going to be a distraction. Right now we got control of three beacons. And if I get close to their home, they're going to be focusing on me and not really worrying too much about what's around them. Now, I don't think I have a regular Phantom, guys. I only had the Stellar version. The extra 5% durability you get from this is next to nothing. You won't even notice it. So if you have the regular Phantom, you know, no big deal. You get the Phantom. If you get a paint job, throw it on there. There's only a 5% difference in durability at that point. And like I'm saying, you won't even notice it. If I would have had the regular one in my hangar, I would have ran that. But I've only got, you know, certain models of these things. So I am playing on my account. And I am in Champion League, so you got to remember, in Champion League, almost everybody you're playing is maxed out or close to it. I mean, you're gonna run, you're gonna run mostly in the guys with the high mark two to completely maxed out stuff. So my levels have to match. You have to match the levels that you're going up against. So all my stuff is, uh, you know, high mark two or maybe mark three. But like I said, it's taken me, it took me years. Right now, I get a bunch of perks and stuff for being part of the YouTube Creators program, but it took me years it took me years the first probably six years i've played this game and i've been playing for about 10 guys i've been playing this game for almost 10 years in the first like five or six years i've played this game i probably spent 50 bucks when i first started playing lancelot was just coming out i think i spent around 50 bucks to get myself a lancelot and i didn't spend another dime on this game for several years so you don't have to you don't have to spend a lot of money there's a lot of people who choose to spend a lot of money and chase the new stuff, but there's also a lot of people who don't want to spend or can't spend. They think this game has to be really expensive, but the truth is, it doesn't. It, it's you got to have some patience, though. You got to have some patience. You're not going to build a really awesome hangar overnight. You got to get on the game and play a lot to grind for the resources. And if you do that, and if you got some skill. You know, you'll you'll start earning a lot of silver, a lot of gold, a lot of this, a lot of that, and you'll be able to start making a nice hangar. I mean, you can build five robots in the workshop in a couple of months. I think it takes roughly three weeks to build a robot once you have all six of the hangar or the workshop slots unlocked, and then you can actually watch videos to make it build faster. So it doesn't take all that long. I mean, I would say within six months to a year if somebody plays enough, they could build a hangar that looks a lot like this right here and move up into Champion League and do really well. Now, my advice, though, is don't be in any big hurry to get up in Champion League because, you know, a lot of people I know are down in the lower leagues, and when they get up to Champion, they say the lower leagues were actually more fun. It was a little bit easier down there. They just said there was more, I don't know, just matchmaking was better, but it sounds like the lower leagues are pretty decent. All right, let's go and drop in the Skyros. And we are going to move on up there. This Titan is trying to steal our beacon. So we're going to get on this beacon and make sure he can't take it. Currently, it looks like our team was winning. But now we've only got one beacon. So, dear team, go get the beacon. So I'm going to, try to see, I'm going to see if I can push this guy off of here. Let's see if we can get him off here. Um, Go, little guy. Go, little guy. Oh, crap. We can't budge him. So I guess the Skyros can't push Titans anymore. We used to be able to push them right off of there. You can still push regular robots pretty well, but I guess you can no longer push Titans. So let's go push this guy. All right, let's go see if we can get him off of the map. All right, well, he's moving. Ah, oh, crap, we missed. We missed. Hold on. So that guy's going to push him. Yeah, wait, I don't want to block that dude. Let's, okay, there we go. He's off the beacon. Awesome job. We are going to take this beacon back and come out of the ball and smash this guy a couple times. Ba -ba 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 Bam! He's dead. Nice. All right, so we got that beacon back. So we still got our three beacons, and we are currently winning. So far, the first game is going really well. This Skyros is very good. Those new Titan flamethrowers that are wrecking everything, this can take a hit from those. That Those flamethrowers don't seem to damage the Skyros. I hope they don't change that, but as of right now, the Skyros barely takes any damage from the Titan Flamethrowers, but you probably do have to have the Theseus pilot on it, 
which blocks all damage resistance or whatever. So if you can get the Skyros with the Theseus pilot, I know pilots are hard to get. Pilots are those one of those things that takes a long time to get because every day you got to check, check back to see if the pilot you want is there and then you have to buy it with the gold and stuff. So that's pilots. I, I really wish they would make so the pilots were available at all times where you could just go in there and buy the one you wanted and they didn't have the pilot rolling system. So it takes a really, really, really long time to get some of those pilots, which is kind of sucks. But, you know, unfortunately, that's the way they got the pilot system set up. But some things in this game are pretty easy to get some things are very very hard to get so you do have you gotta have a lot of patience in this game you really do all right so we, we're finally going to get this beacon here comes one of those bedwetters up here the bedwear whatever you want to call it and he he torched that guy i think and it died and we win nice let's go check out the scores and see what we got so the first game went very smooth that was actually a very good game I enjoyed it, it was fun, the robots performed well, and we crushed the enemies. Alright, so I had 4.7 million damage, 4 assists, 8 kills, I mean, came in first place. That's not bad, that's not bad at all. Alright, so let's go ahead and drop Little Phantom. This is our second Beacon game, I believe we are playing some Beacon Rush, which is my favorite game mode. So we'll play one more Beacon game after this, and then we'll go play a couple of Team Deathmatch games. But we're going to grab the Phantom again, because he's a great little Beacon Runner. Once we get to a certain point, like right about right about now, let's move up in front of this thing, hit the ability, and then we're going to run into the center. So here we go. Let's go do it to it. And it looks like my teammates already got to the center before I did. So, hey, cool. We'll just help defend it, and then if I get in trouble... I'll hit the little button and I'll teleport back to where I came from and not have to worry too much about it. So right now I'm just going to worry about doing some damage to those guys. But yeah, there we go. Teleport it. Back home we go. Ba -ba bam bam Alright, so what is the... Did I just see a... What was that? Either my eyes are playing tricks on me or that was a dashing Dagon. I don't think that was a Dagon. I must, I must be seeing things because Dagons can't dash like that. Alright, so we hit the ability. We are running into their home. We're going to distract them. They're going to be focused on me. Like, we're, our team's going to grab beacons easily when the, I get these guys to focus on me because they're going to be, be paying attention to try and take me out and not trying to get those beacons back. Or normally, that's what a lot of those guys are going to do. So, we're just going to go up here. I mean, I'm probably going to end up dying, but hey, I was a good distraction for a few seconds where our team got the beacons. Let's drop in this Skyros. And we're just going to make sure they do not take our beacons. Or maybe I'll go back here and try and steal one of theirs. So that looks like an easy beacon to grab. They're going to have a hard time damaging me because this thing is crazy, crazy, crazy good. If I would have put some three armor kits on this or three balance units or something, you know, that would have made it even stronger. But you're going to see how good this is with no modules, guys. Most of the other robots, you have to have modules on it. But I think on this one, you can actually get away without running any modules. I would highly suggest, though, three heavy armor kits or three balance units if you can get them. Now, a better drone for this, though, is the armadillo. If you're able to get an armadillo drone for this, you should definitely get the armadillo. But if not, I mean, you could throw a nebula. You, you could throw a Persephone on there. Persephone would be another good one, but... I didn't have an extra Persephone. All I had laying around that was free to play was a Nebula, so that's what we threw on there. And it's working very, very, very well. Alright, so we're, oh, he went into the thing. Let's get back into the bowl. Now, when you play this robot, you want to stay in the bowl 90% of the time. Right now, I'm just being a distraction. So, you don't want to come out of the bowl unless you're 100% sure they're not going to kill you, which they could easily do. So, I was hoping to throw that guy off the ship, but unfortunately... Now I'm going to trick him. He thinks I'm leaving, so I'm going to come right back up behind him. I'm going to come out of the ball, and as soon as he goes to attack my teammate, da, 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 done. Oh, my teammate got him. All right, so it didn't work, but it did work. That was good. We got rid of that guy. So I'm just being a really annoying distraction right now, and that's, that's all I'm doing. I'm just really distracting people, annoying them, and they're going to hate me, but that's okay. All right, let's go ahead and bring on our Titan. Here comes the node ends. And we're just going to stay back, and we're going to focus on healing our teammates. We don't care about getting damaged. We don't care about fighting. We are a healer. We are playing 100% support. All right, well, the game ended. 
All right, cool, cool. We won. That was a really fast one. Let's check out the scores on this. And then we'll go we'll go play one more beacon game, and then we will come back for a team death match. So there we only had 1 million damage, 0 kills, 0 assists. Those scores don't look too good, but I came in third place. Nobody had high damage or good scores, but we won the game. So that went pretty well. I don't know if the other team was squishy or what, but hey, let's go play another one. So it looks like we've dropped on Yamato once again. We're going to go ahead and drop the big old rolly ball. And I don't suggest dropping this as your first robot, but we're going to do it. The main reason I put this in is because the Titan flamethrowers, when you run into them, they can't really damage this much. So you should probably wait till the Titans are out with the flamethrowers before you drop this in. But if you need to use this as a beacon runner, this is actually a really good beacon runner because it can get the beacons pretty quickly. So it's can, you know, the Phantom or this guy right now are probably my two top choices for free to play beacon runners. Both can be built in the workshop. And like I said, if you get all six slots open from the workshop, you can probably build one of these robots in probably about three weeks, maybe faster if you're watching all the advertisements. Now, I'm not sure how long it takes to get all, all six of the, the building slots open in the workshop, but once you got them, yeah, about three weeks, maybe two weeks if you watch the videos, guys. So right now, we are going to try and go get some of these beacons. That guy doesn't even know I'm there. So we're going to roll into their home. And that guy, hopefully he doesn't see me. If not, I'm just going to roll right onto their beacon and I'm going to steal it. But this is a great overall robot for beacons. Like, I love this thing for beacons. It's not the greatest robot for a team deathmatch. But if you play this thing correctly in a team deathmatch, it works and it works well. You'll actually get to see that pretty soon when we go play some team death matches. All right, we got that guy, but you never want to be out of the ball unless you know nobody's going to shoot you. And as soon as you get your kill or you get a couple of shots off, get right back into the ball because this thing is not durable outside of the ball. Now, I'm going to come over here and try and distract these guys. I, oh, man, I thought I was going to get a really quick kill. So back into the ball before they notice I'm here because I'm being shot at. So, yeah back into the ball we go let's try and push these guys off the beacons all right he's got a buddy coming in to try and save him but i think we're gonna have to tcb over here tcb baby that's what elvis used to say taking care of business so let's go ahead and uh, come down here somebody's hitting really hard and it's damaging me so we're gonna try to escape now if we would add the heavy armor kits like i said we're playing this guy with no modules today just for the heck of it but if we would have had some heavy armor kits or something on there, it would have lasted a lot longer. All right, so now we're going to bring in our long-range fighter guy or mid-range fighter guy. I love magnetars. I love pulsars. They're some of my favorite weapons that you can build in the workshop. They're just really good. They lock people down. They're good at close range. They're good at the distance. They do nice damage. And, yeah. I, what? Titan flamethrowers, guys. This is why I should have brought out the Skyro. So those Titan flamethrowers will rip any robot into a million little pieces instantly. You can have the best robot in the game and those Titan flamethrowers just take you out instantly. So due to the fact that, yeah, I don't think we're going to win this one. Come on, get it, 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 get it. Come on, die. Come on, come on. All right, good, good. Hopefully they don't have any more Titan flamethrowers. I mean, no robot can withstand that. No, there's nothing out there except for the Skyros that can deal with that kind of punishment from those those Titan flamethrowers. Those things are un unbelievably nasty, and I feel like those should be nerfed ASAP. Like, I don't, I don't, I I feel like they couldn't have intentionally brought out something that strong. I really don't. I think that's got to be a mistake. I don't know. We'll see if they change it. I don't know. Maybe they'll just leave it. I'm really not sure. But right now, we're just going to get some shots off. And, you know, if we see anybody that needs healed, we're going to hit them. Right there, I accidentally healed, but I don't think it attached to somebody. Always make sure you see, like, a blue ring around one of your teammates. Because when you hit the healing, if there's a blue ring around somebody, it's going to attach to that person and heal them. So... Every time with this Titan, every time you hit the healing and you have a tether attached to somebody, you get defense points, which makes it stronger. So you don't really want to be out in the open unless you're attached to another robot. If you just hit it and it does not attach to another robot, that actually does you very, very little. 
So you want to try and make sure you're always doing that. But I don't know. These aren't really like super strong weapons, right? These aren't the strongest weapons in the world, but they work. So right now we need to grab a couple of beacons really fast because it looks like we are kind of losing. So I don't really think I should be beacon running with this Titan, but we're going to have to try. All right. there. Oh, crap. Two Titans just came in. Yeah, like I said, I shouldn't have come up here. We are doing nice damage, so I ain't going to lie. Those weapons do great damage up close, but they suck from a distance. These weapons, the closer you get, the harder you hit, the harder they hit. But the problem is they don't. They got a three-second lock on, which is a pain. Let's go ahead and bring in Mr. Fenrir. I think we need to get him in here, and let's see what we can do with this because... Wait. I could have swore... I don't know. I'm just kind of on autopilot here. I didn't notice for a second that my fan... I could have swore I clicked on the Fenrir. It dropped the Phantom. All right. Well, we're going to roll with it. So we're just going to go to the back. The sad thing is I didn't even notice for a second. I hit the drop button. I pressed, pressed go forward. And I was so busy talking. I didn't even notice my Phantom drop for a second. But yeah. I either hit the wrong button or something. But yeah. We're going to drop the Phantom. All right. So we're going to just... Uh, I shouldn't have shot him. I'm stupid. I He might not have even known I was there. He probably would have just ran away. So sometimes it's best not to shoot at somebody when you don't want to draw attention to yourself. Like when you're back here trying to steal a beacon in their home. If you see somebody and they don't notice you, don't shoot at them. Because you don't want to draw attention to yourself as you're trying to steal a beacon. Wait till you get the beacon before you start shooting the people. That was a mistake on my part right there. So, yeah. All right, come on. Go, little guy. Go, little guy. Go. Go, little guy. Go, little guy. Go. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. You're going to die. Nope. Yes. Got him. That We must be lagging a little bit because I feel like that was a lag kill right there. Oh, yeah. We're definitely lagging. I can see that guy kind of jerking around there. So, yeah. Oh, crap. Sandwiches. Here comes. Oh, thank goodness. It's just a Fenrir. I thought that was going to be a Titan with flamethrowers. I mean, even the robot flamethrowers hit really, really hard. But we're going to run circles around him. We should be able to run circles around this guy faster than he can turn around. And that will be a big help to us. I think I have... Alright, yeah. Watch that. He's going to get confused. He, he don't know what to do here. Ah, crap, crap. I'm locked. Dang it. So it looks like we're probably going to lose this game. But I'm going to tell you what. These robots are performing really, really well. I'm having a lot of fun playing these. So we're going to go play a couple of team death team death matches after this. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can make some sort of comeback. It looks like there's only me and one other guy left on this team. Oh, there's three of us. And it looks like there's probably five of them. So yeah, unfortunately, I think we are going to lose this one, but we did our best. I'm not a big fan of this map. It's just, it's just huge. Unfortunately, the, a sniper just dropped in over there. Yeah. Oh, he's got bendy bullets. I thought he was going to be running Reapers, so that's not as bad. If he had Reapers and he shot me with them, those would really mess up my Fenrir. So that's three versus four right now. I guess we have a chance. All right, so I finally got that beacon. I'm going to try and get... Oh, he's too far away. I can't hit him. That's the only thing I don't like about Redeemers and Turan is a 350 meter range. It's good, but, you know, it's not five or 600 meters. I get, I've kind of gotten used to running weapons with a five and 600 meter range, so those have spoiled me a little bit. I used to only run like shorter range weapons, but I'm going to tell you what, for old weapons, Redeemer and Turan is awesome. Now on the, the live stream I just did a couple of days ago, I ran Redeemers and Turan on I think every robot except for one, and I did a full two hour live stream with just those weapons, and I'm telling you what, they did good. They did really, 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 really good. Maybe I'll make that live stream pop up at the end of this video as well in case you want to watch that. So we'll have two different videos popping up that you might want to check out. One for the old school Punisher and Punisher T weapon. And the live stream where I played the Redeemers and the Thrawns for the entire stream. Alright, so let's get up here on the top. Uh, man, freaking Titans. I was going to say, let's get this beacon back and win this thing. We're making a little bit of a comeback. I mean, if you look at the beacon bar, it's not as much of a gap as it was. But the problem is there's two of us and there's, yeah. Was that my last robot? It sure was. All right. 
Coffee time. Oh well. There's one guy left on our team. The beacon bar is dwindling down and even though we're going to lose, that was that was actually a really good game. I mean, when the games are fun and the games are close, I don't mind losing if the game was good. That wasn't that bad, was it? All right, let's check out these scores and see what we got. Come on, come on, come on. Good scores. All right, so I did 5 million damage, 1 assist, 5 kills, 6 beacons, came in second place. Not too bad, so let's go play a couple of team death matches next. All right, so here comes team death match number one. I really like to start off with the Demeter on team death match because not only is it a good fighter, it's very durable, it's got the nice purple shield. You can also really protect your teammates with it. So I think this is a really good first robot and some jerk locked me down from 5,000 miles away. So what we want to do is find somebody who's taking damage and teleport over to him. If we don't find that, then we're just going to go ahead and hit our shield, protect ourselves, or we're fighting somebody. So you can use the shield to protect yourself and heal yourself, or you can use it to help your teammates. Now there's two Shin Laos over here, which is not great. So uh, yeah, here we go. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so what we want to do is heal this guy as soon as we can. Unfortunately, he's he's really low on health. So two, one, perfect, perfect. We're going to get him. All right, he's attached to me, so he's healing himself a little bit, and now I am healing him up. So I'm going to go. Come on, Mr. Shen Lao. Holy crap. All right, come on. We almost killed one. Ah, oh, they got me. They got me. All right, so I went down. Two Shen Laos with those new weapons are very hard to deal with. Let's bring in the Kepri, which is a great fighter and healer. So it's a, it's a really good team deathmatch robot because it can heal people and it can fight. So we're going to get those Shen Laos out of here. I love me some Kepri, guys. Kepri is such an awesome robot. I mean, just because something gets nerfed doesn't always mean it's bad. This, this robot's probably been nerfed like three or four times. I mean, I think the nerf cycle is probably over. I don't expect this guy to get rebalanced again unless they actually buff it. So... Nothing is ever safe from being rebalanced ever, but more than likely, I don't think this one's going to get rebalanced. So right now, we're going to go ahead and just see if anybody needs healed. Everybody looks pretty good. All right, that guy got shot. Let's attach to him. And I think we need to get this guy out of the Coliseum. He's just kind of like popping out and taking these little pop shots. So I think we want to focus on him, but we also got to watch out for the other guy that's over here. What is that? What is that? What is that? Oh my god, how did he get back there? I don't understand how he got back behind me like that. I really don't. Anyways, when he comes out of stealth, he's going to die. Alright, nice. We got him. He's dead. We smashed him and bashed him. So let's go work on this guy inside of the Coliseum. I don't know. Should I go in there? I'm kind of thinking maybe I should try and... Oh, wait a second. Here comes the Titans. We're going to focus on this Titan. So they're already dropping their Titans. We are already dropping our Titans. Now, honestly, when I come to when I come to play my Nodens, I should almost wait till our team has Titans. That way I can heal our team's Titans over regular robots. But you do kind of want to get your Titans in early as possible these days as well. Nodens may be a little bit of an exception because it's a healer, it's not a fighter, it's a support. It's really just designed to heal stuff. But I mean, you can fight with it if you need to, but it, it's not really going to be like your best choice to fight with a Nodens, I would say. But you know, it is what it is. Let's go. What is that? All right. Holy crap. Those things hit hard. I guess we'll go ahead and bring in this thing and dingy right here, Mr. Fenrir with the Tyrounds and the Redeemers. And since we're a tank, we're just going to go ahead and find a couple of guys. We're going to get real close to them and try and beat them up at close range. But yeah, Fenrir is such a tank. This is one of the first robots I think everybody should build. Right now, I think Fenrir and Skyros are two really, really important robots that everybody should have. I mean, those guys are just super awesome. And, I mean, Skyros for a while there wasn't something I recommend it. But now that the meta's changed a little bit, Skyros is definitely something you might want to consider. Skyros does have a couple of weaknesses, like the, the Crisis with the Reapers. That, wow. That, that guy burned me up big time. Alright, let's bring out the Titan. 
I see there's a flamethrower titan over there, so we want to focus on getting rid of him, but from a distance. We want to stay back. We want to. We don't want to be able to let that guy get within 350 meters because those titan flamethrowers will wreck you big time. So it's probably good to have some sort of titan with five or 600 meter weapons on there where you can actually get back and and try and kill those titan flamethrowers with a distance from a distance because they are nasty. They are brutal. Nobody likes them except for the guy playing them, right? So let's go ahead and shoot these guys. We need to look for teammates that need healed. That guy needs it really bad. So we're going to hit him with a couple of healing charges. So there's one. Um, let's try and hit him again. But wait, wait, wait. It. I pushed the button and it didn't work. Okay. Okay. Couldn't get the healing to work. Every once in a while you have that kind of thing happen. I don't know if that's the... I don't know if that's a, a glitch on the, you know, thing you're playing on or a game glitch or what, but it is what it is. So, yeah. So we're going to throw out a couple of healing things over that way just because we need some resistance right now. Not necessarily because they need healed. You just always want to stay attached to somebody. So let's try and get into range. One thing you notice is I keep losing my lock on because things are going in and out of stealth. And that's the one thing I hate about these weapons is the lock on it drives me crazy. Once you get locked on, you know, if you could keep the lock on, these would be great. There may be some pilot skills for these weapons to make them lock on faster. But honestly, I don't really want to use my uh, memoriam or whatever for pilot skills for weapons because you never know if you're always going to be playing the same set of weapons or not. Personally, I change weapons constantly. Most people change weapons a lot. So... When you put pilot skills for a weapon, when you change weapons, then your pilot skills are obsolete and you have to reroll the skills. So right now, this isn't working out very well because I'm not able to shoot hardly anybody because they keep dying or whatever, going into stealth before I can even lock on. So the lock on on these weapons sucks. If it wasn't for the lock on, these weapons would be top notch. Like I love these weapons, but the, the lock on kills them. The lock on makes these weapons lousy. But there's not much we can do about that, unfortunately. All right, so let's go ahead and shoot these guys. We want to stay back from a distance. Ah, there he goes. We got a good lock on now. It's nice that if the uh, targets are close enough together, you can switch without losing your lock on. But if they're a little further away, you got to move from one target to the next quickly so you don't lose that lock on. But yeah, we just keep losing it over and over again. We, yeah. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of good Titan weapons that you can just buy. Most of the good Titan weapons have to be pulled out of crates or, you know, you got to buy them or throw money or something. So that's one thing I do wish they would change is make some of the things easier to get or more readily available. Because right now you kind of got a poor, a poor choice of Titan weapons like... The robot, the robot weapons, the modules you can get for your regular robots. I don't really have too many complaints there as what you can get. But when it comes to Titan weapons, man, I don't even mind the Titan modules. I mean, the three anti-controls and the cannibal reactor are just fine. But trying to get good weapons for a Titan is rough. That is rough. I'm going to ask them to add some more weapons into uh, that you can buy with platinum because... They should give us something like the Veyrons or Avoras or the Maha and Maha Vajras. One of those sets should at least be available to buy with Platinum at the moment. So I am actually going to ask Pixonic if they could maybe add those in. I mean, I don't know if they're going to pay attention to me or not, but I'm going to ask them because there's no good, no good choices for Titan weapons. But the good news is, I mean, we're doing okay over here. Nodens is not a bad Titan if you play it as a support. If you've got good teammates, Nodens is good. If you got bad teammates, eh, you know, you're probably going to have very hit and miss games with Nodens. But if you play it right and your team's doing well, you can really take advantage of healing people up and helping your team out. All right. So we want to try and make sure our guy here doesn't die. He's in a big old nasty Newton. And Newtons are squishy, they're not very good anymore. So. We want to try and make sure we can heal them up and let them not die. Okay, that didn't come out right, but that's okay. So we're going to go ahead and just pay attention to him. The other guy is, okay, that's a Demeter. Cool, cool. I was going to say, he's going to get in the way so I can't lock on and heal him when he needs it. But 
sometimes other robots do run in the way and you get the wrong person and that kind of sucks all right let's zap this guy there's only one person left on this team so they're not gonna live oh it's a sky rose that's gonna be a pain in our butt all right he died fast never mind it wasn't much of a pain in the butt at all no complaints there and our team wins all right all right all right i like it i like it a lot so let's go check out the scores and see what we get so it is currently sunday around what 4 p.m 3 p.m there's usually a lot of people on and playing right now so this isn't like a dead time we're on the u.s server so there we got 3.1 million damage three assists two kills yeah i mean for an old school hanger you you can't ask for much better than this honestly i mean this is like old outdated stuff and it's doing just fine i wouldn't want to go in a squad and play against like you know omega or exo or something with this hanger but if you're just playing solos or duos this is more than good enough all right so this is going to be the last game and we're doing another team death match so i think i'm going to drop the demeter in first because i do want to heal up my teammates right I know I didn't go over pilot skills, but going over all the pilot skills on, on extra robots is going to add an additional lot of time to this video. And as a free-to-play player, it's going to take you a while to get a bunch of pilot skills and pilots saved up anyway. So really the point of this isn't really showing you the builds, just showing you that using stuff that you can get as free-to-play is going to work, right? That's really the whole point of this video. So we're going to back out of that. We don't want to, we don't want to stay in that Harpy's red tornado thingy dingy because it does damage you so yeah i'm lucky that it hit like i was right on the edge of it and not inside of it when it got there so we're going to teleport to this guy and try and just make sure he doesn't die as he's fighting these dudes like this was a that was a very risky decision for him to come in here and it's very risky for me to try and help him out because there's a whole team over here and there's me and this guy right now so i'm going to go ahead and get back to cover and I'm going to wait for my ability re to recharge. And if he's still alive in a minute, we're going to go ahead and teleport back to him. Because he's going to need it. He's going to need that healing. And this is how you would play one of these robots right here. You know, you want to focus on healing your teammates more than, uh, more than anything. When the healing's over, get yourself back to cover where they can't shoot you. That's probably the best way to do it. Don't focus on fighting. Don't focus on brawling. Don't focus on getting kills when you're playing this focus on healing your teammates right i know he's gonna need it again so here we go let's hit him teleport 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 what's going on it didn't work there it goes okay it took a minute and did he where's he at did he die he might have died so we're gonna go back inside the thing there's i'm locked down that's not good there's too many teammates over here all right he's coming back out in front of me is that the same guy? I'm not really sure. Maybe he came back here to heal up for a second. No, that's a new guy. That's a different guy. All right, something just hit my robot really hard. So I'm going to try and heal myself up here. I mean, he doesn't need it, but sometimes you have to use the healing for yourself. And I'll try and kind of protect him for a second. No, healing's over. So yeah, crap sandwiches. Here's a bad... Oh, it's a curry too. That curry is going to kick my butt. Yeah. I think we're going to go and drop in Mr. Phantom. This is just a fun robot. It's just good for surprise attacks. Run in, attack. If you get in trouble, leave, right? Phantom's a great little team deathmatch robot. I like this guy. I like this guy a lot. And when you get close, it's got a whiteout drone. So it'll like EMP them and make so they can't use their abilities if you get close enough. Whiteout's a very cool little drone. You know, you could probably throw a white on them just about anything as long as it's as long as it's a robot you're going to be getting close to the enemies with. So I was hoping to white that guy out, but it didn't work. He was able to go into his ability. We want to try and white him out before we can drop those turrets on the ground, and unfortunately he did. So we weren't able to white him out. He might even have some sort of like uh, protection against it. Maybe I don't know, mothership or some sort of sort of thingy dingy that make so he can't be emp'd at the moment i'm not even sure if that exists is there anything that makes sure you can't be emp'd in the game i think there is but i don't remember what it is offhand i'd have to go look 
There's about a million motherships and modules and robots and stuff. This game's got a lot of stuff in it now. But so far, I'm going to say this hangar is working out really good. I mean, I'm having fun with it. It's all doing... None of these robots are underperforming, in my opinion. You know, the Pulsar... Like, the Pulsar weapons aren't as strong as they used to be, but they do lock people down. They got nice damage, nice range. I mean, all these things are working really, really good. I mean... I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with this hangar. It, it's extremely awesome, extremely amazing, and I like it. I like it a lot. All right, I died. I didn't like that. Let's go ahead and bring in Mr. Skyros, and pay attention to how I play this on the Team Deathmatch. So what we're going to do is just sneak up and annoy people, and then when they're not expecting it, we're going to come out of the ball, shoot them a few times. So what I like to do is come out of the ball behind cover, that way I can get back into the ball when I need to. So come out of the ball where nobody can shoot you, right? And then, wait a second. So three, two, one. All right, let's go shoot this guy a few times. Now we can go back into the ball anytime we want. So when you're behind cover, come out. Wait till your cooldown's over and then pop out to attack. That way, you know, if you come out of the ball and you need to get right back in, unfortunately, you got like three or four seconds. So right now, we're going to come out of the ball. So two, one. Now we can go back in. So, yeah, we can just go ahead and attack and then, yeah, go back into the ball when we want. So always come out of the ball when you're behind cover where nobody can shoot you and then give yourself those couple seconds until the cooldown of using the ability goes back in. I don't think any of that came out right, but hope you guys understand what I'm talking about. All right, so right there, there's curry turns on the ground. I do not want to come out of the ball or those things will wreck me. So I'm just being kind of like a uh, annoyance. I'm distracting these guys a little bit. I'm being really annoying. And they're kind of not paying as much attention to me as they should be, which is bad for them, right? Let's kill that guy really fast. Bam, bam, bam. And I wanted to get him, but I, I wasn't able to. So let's go back into the ball. They're dropping more robots. I think they're finally going to start noticing that I'm a threat. And I'm not just rolling around. That I'm actually coming out and kicking their butts a little bit. So they might... Oh my gosh, what's happening? That guy... <laughs> that guy's like driving on top of me. Sir, don't stand on my head. What just happened there? Uh, all right. There's Titans. Um, yeah. Okay. My ball died. Let's go ahead and bring on Mr. Nodens. And what we're going to do is focus on healing our teammates. There's some Titans out. So we want to try and wait till we see those Titans up in the air. And then zap them a good one. All right. Cool, cool. We got... Nope. We lost our lock on. Ah, dang it. That's the one problem with these weapons. The lock on really sucks. Big time. I hate the lock-on. It's, it's not my friend. The lock-on is not my friend. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not at all. But it is what it is. Alrighty, guys. Let's go down this way. And we got 14 to 21. Unfortunately, I've got a bad feeling our team is going to lose this one. Somehow, I got a shield. Whoever gave me a shield, thank you. I'm guessing one of my teammates must have mothershipped me with a shield or something. Or maybe my... I don't even know what mothership I'm running, guys. I actually don't know what mothership I've got set up right now. I, I grab something, but I don't know what it is. I don't know if my mothership's giving me a shield or not. Like I said, when it comes to motherships, you just kind of grab whatever you want. Just kind of grab whatever. You know, motherships are the one thing that you are, you are, you're really not going to be able to get a good mothership probably without spending a few bucks or something. So that, that's the problem. So they killed my Nodens really fast right there. It looks like they're, we're down a couple of guys. So I'm going to drop in Mr. Kepri. And the problem is they've got their Titans out and I don't think we do. My Titan's dead. Our team doesn't have Titans out as far as I can tell. And they've got nothing but Titans. So I think we're doomed at this point. I don't think we're going to be able to win this one. We're also... Yeah. Gosh. Nope. We're done. We lost. We, we're definitely going to lose this game. Kind of sad, but we're going to lose. 
Oh man, me versus 45 titans does not work well. I think that's all she wrote. Looks like there's one guy left on our team and everybody else is dead and yeah. I don't think he's going to survive much longer. That's all she wrote. 14 to 32. We should have four more robots left. That means somebody didn't drop all of their robots or one of our teammates disconnected or something. So we were down a player as well, which probably didn't help. I don't know. Maybe he got mad and left or maybe the game crashed on him. I don't know. But right there, we only had two kills, one assist and 4.4 million damage. It looks like we were almost down two guys, to tell you the truth. So we were at a big disadvantage. I mean, we had two guys with less than a million. So I'm, I'm thinking we, we might have actually been down two players right there. But hey, this hangar is doing great. All right, those games were awesome. But let's talk about some other robots and modules that you might want to think about getting. The Harpy and the Siren are really nice. I prefer the Harpy. Erebus can be halfway decent if you play it really carefully. Typhon is a very nice robot, but I do think you have to play it more carefully. Scorpion is a great assassin. The Ravena is really good if you figure out how to use the ability timings right, and the Leech is pretty nice. Raven is really good and a lot of fun, but probably not the best robot for your average person. Invader is a really awesome tank. I love that guy. And for some weird reason, I still really like the Pursuer, and I don't know why. Now, one thing is you can always double check if you find a robot in the store that you like, even that says buy 10,000 components. If you click on that, you'll see that you'll also be able to buy this guy for 6,000 gold. So some of these robots in the store, you can buy with gold instead of building the workshop if you have a bunch of gold laying around. So some of them can be workshop robots or gold robots. So when it comes to the modules, I really like the heavy armor kits and the balance units. Balance units are really, really, really good. I do think everybody should have a couple of last stands laying around. Don't run more than one last stand though. Some people run a two or three and waste their module slots. I think fortifiers are super awesome for robots with physical or energy shields. And when it comes to damage, there's nothing better than the nuclear amplifiers. Now when it comes to titans, I would say Nodens or the Luchador are probably going to be the two best titans that you can actually buy with resources. Minos is a really awesome titan as well. I think it takes a little more skill to play this one, but this thing is top notch with the right build. Now you can buy a Heimdall, but I'm not sure if that robot is for everyone. I notice a lot of people just don't like the Heimdall. I think it's a great robot, but not everybody likes it. But I think Luchador or the Nodens are probably going to be your two best bets. One's a brawler, one's a healer, or you can go with the Minos for like a another type of brawling robot. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. I would really appreciate that a lot. In just a second, those videos I talked about were going to pop up. The live stream where I play the Redeemers and Tehrans and the video where I did nothing but the uh, old school Thunders, Punisher, and Punisher Tease. So if you want to see those things in action, you can. But anyways, hope you guys liked the video. Lightning out. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys later. See ya.